Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this time-lapse version of my soft pastel painting of a very shiny dachshund. I hope that you enjoy this. If you do, please do check out my other material here on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. Also, I'll be releasing longer tutorials from this over on my Patreon where you'll find lots of my full-length videos and much more to help you along in your pastel journey. So I am working on pastel matte paper for this one. I've started using pastel matte a lot more. I'm still experimenting with it a little bit, seeing what I can do with backgrounds in particular, if I can get that soft out of focus look that I like to get on the velour paper that I love to use. So this piece was a great way to see if I can get that effect. Yet another lovely bokeh out of focus background. It was in focus in my photo reference and I really liked all the shapes that the legs of the chairs made in the background, but I didn't want it to be quite as crisp and in focus. So just softened everything up a little bit, put it slightly out of focus so that all the lovely sharp detail in the dog and the cushion should really stand out in front of my background. But as always, I get the background done first so that the nice edges of the dog and the cushion can sit well in front of that. So the edges of everything are so important. And it was also a really dark painting. Uh, normally I don't have this much darkness or black in a background. And especially you would think perhaps to set off a black colored dog that that wouldn't be ideal. But just the way the lighting is catching Archie the Dackel and his cushion and not that background. It really does make him sit in front of it. So I really went to town on all of the darkness in the background. I didn't hold back with that. And I've used a lot of different colors, dark values, as well as pure black. You can see that there's still a lot of color in the background, but it is important to have a good jet black as well when I'm working. And I have another video coming out, which I'll talk a little more about in the rest of this time lapse, all about the, the blacks that I use because I ran out of my favorite black stick that I use uh, during this painting. And I was left holding a couple of very small crumbs for the majority of it uh, until some more of my materials arrived in the post. So I stopped at that point when the new ones arrived and I made a little video about the materials that I use to get my darkest blacks. So that's coming out just after this video. And I would really appreciate your input on that video if you've tried some good dark blacks yourself. I'm asking for your suggestions on that video so we can start a conversation about the blackest blacks. And I have another video as well all about should you even use black in a painting? And I think you've probably realized by now that I think it's fine to use black in a painting, from this piece especially. But I have a video all about that and the use of pure black in paintings and the, the, how it can be used and used in a way that doesn't really dull your work. So I'm still on the background. The background took me a long time, just like most of my backgrounds. Just making sure I'm happy with that before I move on. You can see now that those edges to the dog really do sit in front of my values in the background. So I really enjoyed every part of this painting. Each element was a real joy to work on. but especially this beautiful little face. If you've watched any of my videos or you've followed my work on Facebook or anywhere, you'll know that I have a particular love for the Dachshund. It's a breed that I've grown up with. I have my own girl, Brocky, who's just turned 14 last year. So I have a real love for this breed and I've spent a lot of time with them. 
and it's one breed that I really feel I can paint well because I've known so many Dachshunds and they have such strong individual characters. There are some dog breeds that are a little bit like that, but the Dachshund really is a strong character. And in this pose, in the shot of Archie, I just loved how, um, well, he's a little bit serious perhaps, uh, but he, he somehow looks like a, a wise little dog, full of wisdom and such a great expression in those lovely eyes. So I love trying to figure out what kind of character it is I'm painting. And animals tend to say so much with their faces, their expression, not just in their eyes, but in many different ways in their faces, they express themselves. So I really love painting animals, especially dogs and cats, because they tend to have so much personality. And it's always nice when you know the animal, of course. That gives you a little bit of a head start on capturing a personality. But that's why I also treat the, the process of creating pet portraits as uh, a real bit of teamwork between me and the client. As quite often I'm working from clients' photographs and I'm relying on what they can tell me about the animal. By the time I start to paint, I usually have a pretty good idea of the little character that I'm going to be working on. So as I said at the start, I will release some full-length tutorials on my Patreon channel next month. And I am currently giving the patrons over there the opportunity to vote on which parts of this piece they would most like to see in detail. So I do a range of different types of tutorials over there. Some of them um, with the color codes as I'm working, you'll see the color code flash up in the bottom corner. So you always know exactly what color I'm using. And those tutorials are also narrated. So I chat about the colors I'm using and why and techniques and explain step by step what I'm doing. But then, so that my patrons can watch more of my paintings, because some of my paintings take many, many hours, and I can't narrate all of that and release it. But I also release lots of footage that isn't narrated, so that you can just watch along. You can, it's like being in my studio and just getting to watch as I create the rest of the painting. So on Patreon at the moment, they're taking a vote on which parts they would like to see of this piece. And I'll be releasing some longer tutorials showing all of the beautiful colors that went into creating Archie's coat. The tough time that I had in creating those bright highlights. It really wasn't easy. So I hope that I can help with those tutorials and show you how I created this very particularly bright contrasted sunlit look. But I am well through the painting now and you can see that I have still been struggling with the little crumb of the black fabric castell stick. So it was difficult to get to this point when I only had a little crumb of my blackest black left. And there are quite a few areas in the darkest of the shadows where I did use that blackest black. But I'll go into more detail about that in the little video all about black that's coming soon. But so many other colors went into creating this fur. In the real sunlit areas, those highlights do go extremely bright. But within the shadows is where I could really focus on bringing in lots of other colors to let my darkest darks 
really look contrasted and those brightest highlights really shine out. So I've used a mixture of my unison pastels on this and you'll also see me pick up quite a few of my Terry Ludwig dark set. Those have been particularly useful in this piece just to give me a really broad yet subtle range of values in the dark end of the spectrum. So another part I was quite looking forward to doing was this stripey cushion. So I decided to tackle that with my pastel pencil, a nice navy colour. But I had to sharpen the pastel pencil I think about four times on my way across this cushion. I was leaning reasonably hard and then rubbing all of the pigment in as I went. Just to spread it out a little bit, get it to cover the paper a little bit. But the pastel matte paper really did eat my pastel pencil across this. That was quite heavy usage of pastel pencil. But it gives me the basis for the cushion. And then it's just a matter of creating the darker areas. And then starting the laborious task of filling in all of the little highlight stripes. But there's such lovely light and shade in this piece. It was so much fun to really think about the sunlit areas and then make adjustments in colour for those areas that are in the shadows. So it's quite a satisfying thing to work on this. And the main thing to focus on is the colours that you're choosing. So when something dips into shadow, I'm picking up different colours and really just taking my time, working my way across. At this point, I'm not leaning on the work. I'm sort of hovering my hand a little bit, so that's why you don't see me smudge anything. If you're doing something similar, maybe you can tape some paper over the area that you want to lean on. But I really just went for it and tried to hover <laughs> and take my time on each stripe. So it was laborious, but extremely enjoyable. All of my favourite elements to paint within one painting. And I really hope that you've enjoyed seeing it come together in this speedy version. As I've said, I'll be releasing the longer tutorials from this on my Patreon channel and I'll add links in the description below if you'd like to see those. But if you're only able to support me via YouTube, that's fine as well. So please do hit the subscribe button, like the videos, all of that is great support to me. So do check out my other YouTube videos here as you'll see Mocha, my cat, as a lovely paint-along demo if you'd like to have a go. But until next time, happy pastling.